Hi students, welcome to lesson on exercise 18b, transformation of sinusoidal functions. So in 18a, we only worked on uh, the sine function, okay? And this time we'll work with the cosine function. So all the transformations are the same. Uh, we'll just do a quick sketch of the sine function again. So I'll just do the one period. So the sine function starts on your central axis, right? Finishes in a period of 2 pi, right? Starts in a positive uh <laughs> positive y values, goes back to 0 at pi, right? And then goes negative values to 2 pi. So those are all the values of sine. Cosine starts at its maximum value of 1, right? And then at pi over 2 is 0, and you can get those values from the unit circle, right? So that would be 3 pi over 2. Um, at pi has its negative 1, right? So you had a negative 1 here, you'd have 1 up here. Sorry, I probably should have done that here as well. Okay, and then at 2 pi, again, period of 2 pi. Okay, so the biggest difference is you have to know where the cos function starts. The cos function starts with a maximum. The sine function starts on your central axis. Right, so there's the note. The cosine function, function starts with the maximum. The sine function starts on the central axis. Important to state. All right, sketch the following function. So the first thing I always do when I sketch these functions, I'm going to calculate the period um, just to figure out uh, how I should be labeling this graph. So uh, our period is equal to 2 pi divided by the value of b. And the value of b is pi over 4. So 2 pi divided by pi over 4. So if you're not sure, write it out as a division. So 2 pi divided by pi over 4. And the period is going to be 2 pi times 4 over pi. Again, you might be able to do this without having to do all this work. And the period is 8. Okay, so that means for to complete a full one uh, curve, let's call it, one full period, it'll take uh, 8 units. So notice that, again, the period is, is in units, not pi. So I'm going to make sure that my x-axis is in units and not units of pi. All right, so let's find the central... The central axis is negative 1, so negative 1 over here. This is our central axis, so I usually like sketching that just so we know that that's our central axis. And I know that the amplitude is 2, so we're going to go 2 above the central axis and 2 below the central axis. So 1, 2 below at negative 3. This is where the minimum is going to be of our curve. And we're going to go 2 above, so that would be 2, right? 1, 2. 2 above will make it a maximum of 1. Okay, so we've got what we need. The only thing we have left to do is really find out where is our graph starting, which means our graph, and I'll go back to the top, our cos graph, because we're working with cos, right, starts at the maximum. So I need to find out where that maximum is going to be. Notice that we shifted 3 to the right. So I'm going to put 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3. I know that there will be a maximum 3 to the right. So I'm going to put my maximum right here. Don't forget, that's where your maximum is, right? This is your central axis. Your maximum's here. Your minimum's going to be over here. Okay, well, we have a period of 8. Well, I could go 8 that side and do a complete period here. But I think since more room's on this side, I'm going to go backwards. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So notice that if this is 1, I would start at 3. And it would 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 you would have a full period within this little box that I've drawn here. Okay, so you're going to have one full period. Again, the period is 8. So you're going to have a maximum here. And notice that one full period, which means you're going to have a maximum over there at negative 5. Well, where's the minimum going to be? Well, think of your coast graph. Your minimum is going to be exactly in between the two maximums. So the minimum is going to be at negative 1. So you're going to have a negative x equals negative 1 here. It's going to cross the central axis exactly in between the min and the max. So we're going to cross the central axis at x equals 1. And we're going to cross the central axis at x equals negative 3. And that's enough information to sketch one full period. So you're going to basically connect the dots from here, here on in. And there's your full period. And notice I could do another 8. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And... I would get another complete curve. So I would have another maximum here. I'd have a minimum exactly in between the two. And your curve would do that. 
Okay, here's the next example. So again, I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. I'm going to calculate the period. So the period is equal to 2 pi divided by value of b. The value of b in this case is 2. So 2 pi divided 2, period is equal to pi. Okay, so since the period is equal to pi, I'm going to make sure that my x-axis is in terms of pi. Uh, don't forget, every single period is broken up into four pieces. So, for example, the last example, the period was eight. Every single part of every single section of the curve was di has a distance of two. So two, 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 two for eight. And here you're going to have pi over four because you divide that by four. Okay, so um, let's try to work with the information I've gathered here. Our value of d is three, which means that's our central axis one two, three. So I'm going to have my central axis here. I'm going to put my dotted line again to demonstrate central axis. Uh, and my amplitude is four. Uh, don't forget, this negative only applies to the negative coast graph. Okay, so for four, so we're going to go above four. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to be right on that uh, arrow. And we got to go below four. So one, two, three, and four. So that's where your min and max are going to be. So this is going to be max of 7, right? So the, you have the central axis 3 and then above 4, so 7. And the minimum will be negative 1. So again, I'm just going to put my dotted lines here to represent the min and max values. Okay? Uh, now, we just need to figure out where the graph starts. Well, the graph starts at pi over 4. Uh, left pi over 4, right? So we're going to move over to left pi over 4. And... So that's, I'm going to make sure that that value is on my axis. We have pi over 4. And again, because the period is pi and it will be split up into four sections, the, having sections of pi over 4 is probably a good thing. So we're going to have pi over 4. So this is negative pi over 4, sorry. Okay, and we're going to go, this is pi over 4, pi over 4 again. So this will be positive pi over 4. And then we're going to have 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. And then we're going to have 3 pi over 4. And we're going to have 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. And we can go back to if you wanted. Uh, so this is negative pi over 2. So again, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. And both ways. All right. Well, again, going back, our graph starts at negative pi over 4. So we're going to put a little line here. That's where our graph starts. And it has a total distance of pi. So 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 4. So we're going to have a complete curve. So that line's not very straight. Maybe I can help that out a bit. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so I'm going to have a complete curve on this interval here. Okay, the only thing I need to add to this is we're graphing the graph of negative cos. So if our normal cos graph starts with a positive, right, or sorry, with a maximum, I should say, our negative cos graph starts with a minimum. So our negative cos graph will just be a reflection of our original. So instead of starting with the maximum, you start and finish with the minimum. Your maximum will be a point exactly in between the two, which means at pi over 4, you're going to have your maximum. And again, every section is the same, which means you're going to cross a central axis in between those two min and max, and again, central axis between min and max. And one full curve is going to look like this. And I'm just going to put arrows to the other end, and there's a full curve of the graph. So again, I could I could draw out another pi uh, another pi. So one, two, three, four, and I could make another full curve. Don't forget, we started with the minimum because the negative cos graph, right? If I was just going to draw the negative cos graph, it would just look something like this. So that's the graph that I've sketched here. Good luck with transformations on trig functions.